All right, on the dot, let me share. You have the slides in the invite. Can everybody hear me? You're yes. fine. Thanks. So, functional update from infrastructure uh, production, particularly. So, in the last week, we built a streaming backup solution with Wally. -E. This came after the outage. We basically decided to have a almost zero loss. I think it's every minute we push the, um, the wall segments into S3 and uh, Azure, and, 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 and Azure um, object storage, which means that we can actually restore the database to any point in time. Um, it's been working for a month almost. Um, and it's working really well. Uh, it's great, actually. We also moved all the front-end and back-end fleet to the ARM environment. ARM is a Azure resource management. It's a basically a, a new, we were using the classic environment, which was the old one. They have the new one. This is kind of the same, the same thing that AWS did some time ago. And we used the opportunity to split API, web, Git, and Psychic load to different machines, to different set of machines. This enabled us to basically downsize a lot of the hosts, instead of 20 hosts that are exactly the same, there are many more hosts, but they're much, much cheaper, uh, and that actually reduced the bill. We also removed the, the legacy original NFS uh, back and forth. It's gone. It was 48 devices, and it was basically wasting money. Uh, we also built a continuous, continuous delivery system for development boxes using Terraform. It's basically so if you want to develop in box, you just need to send a merge request. It gets merged into master, and the, the box is going to pop up. That's it. That gets us out of the business of actually delivering this, this provisioning these kind of boxes. We also enabled Postgres uh, load balancing in production uh, last week. Uh, it's working. It's actually quite interesting. You can see how the load changes, and it's making the database much more resilient. But we still have some challenges there but it's actually working better. And we also moved all the Prometheus and Elk monitoring to the new ARM environment too. That was part of the, the fleet to ARM um, process that we, were, we started doing. We used this opportunity also for another thing, which is challenges, right? Scale. We're basically in unexplored ter territories for what we were doing. Uh, we need to update it to update um, upscale Prometheus from seven gigs of RAM to 30 gigs of RAM because it was basically dropping uh, metrics on the floor. It was just not capable to keep up. We're also hitting IO limits on the database. This means that uh, every now and then the database is basically performing a, a, a checkpoint flush to disk and it blocks because it, it just can't keep up. Uh, we're just getting more data and more and more. And Mirrors are also being a problem right now. They are one, they're performed once per day uh, to reduce the pressure, else uh, they were basically hammering the, the file system all the time. Uh, there is an ongoing effort on this from the development side because uh, we are going to be changing the way it works, uh, but that's going to happen in 9.1 or 2, if I remember correctly. Security, uh, we are trying to get uh, people we don't want people to SSH into production servers. We raised this issue up and we got a lot of pushback from a lot of teams because basically they need to SSH in to run Rails console to do their work. Uh, that's fine, but it is actually a problem of tooling. We don't have the right tooling to actually enable people to do their work and it's showing. Um, we also have challenges on resiliency. Uh, it's, so the moment when we changed the fleet for ARM, we released a lot of power on the front end and the back end started, started struggling. That's when we hit the IO limit on the, on the database. Uh, yesterday, uh, it seemed to be a Git push that was taking us down. Uh, we still don't really know because there's a lack of observability. So we're being impacted that way. So we have, we have couple, quite a, a set of challenges ahead. And in the next week, we expect to 
have the streaming backup for all the databases that we have right now. Uh, their version gitlab.com, for example, and some other uh, sites that we own that they're not actually, be, they are being backup with snapshots, but we don't have enough backup. We would also like to have a backup for files. That is gonna be a long one because we have, we have basically a lot of data. Um, it's gonna take a while, but we would like to at least have that ongoing. We also wanna remove the legacy file storage one, which is one of the first hosts we had for uh, shared uh, files, for example, logs or artifacts, etc. I think we have something like 20 terabytes of artifacts now, which is a lot. Um, we wanna drop the server to replace it with uh, cheaper hosts and more of them. Uh, we want to move to Vault instead of Chef Vault, uh, basically because Chef Vault does not scale with the amount of people we have around and the amount of hosts and secrets we have around. And it's uh, getting really challenging to actually use it. We would like to start using service discovery and real-time configuration for the fleet. Uh, we're gonna need this um, to start using things like review apps for staging. We will basically need to have a way of dynamically manage the fleet, uh, not so rigid as it is with Chef right now. We would like to start building VMs and container image with Chef solo, which means use our own Chef configuration to actually trigger these uh, VM and container images built. Uh, we will do that for review apps and afterwards we will use that for production, separating what's uh, pets from cattle. Uh, pets being the machines that are around, the ones that we adopt, for example, NFS servers, and cattle, everything else that is basically ephemeral. Uh, for example, front-end machines like um, web, work, uh, web workers or psychic, etc. We will like to move deployments out of the terminal into Marvin to start doing deployments with chat ops. We took the first steps that way by starting using Chef push jobs and it's working well so far. The next thing we wanna do is basically get that out of the terminal so people don't need to SSH anymore into production to perform a deploy. And finally, we would like to have multiple replicas to do load balancing. Um, across all of them. Right now we have just one replica and one primary. We would like to have at least two replicas. Uh, that's ongoing, that should be soon enough. But I don't know if we will have more of them. We need to basically discuss that. And finally, any questions? I will stop sharing now and we'll check the chat. Yeah, so uh, regarding ARM, that's uh, Azure Resource Management. It's, um, we have Azure, they had the classic environment where they have some shape of machines and they're basically pushing everyone. They basically have a new infrastructure. That's, that's the whole, the, all, all the change. It's not the CPU architecture. It's just that they're pushing everyone to this new infrastructure uh, out of the classic one. The problem is that we had half the fleet on one side, on the classic, and half the fleet, half the fleet on the new one, on the arm, and we had a peering uh, network in between them, and that's, that basically costs money. So we started pushing everything to the new infrastructure instead of the classic one, so we can stop paying this money that is basically waste. Uh, containers in our infrastructure, not yet. We would like to. Uh, the thing is that we need to basically first, um, we need a way to build or, and configure these containers with our current chef because everything needs to play along. And that's what we're working on right now. We will move, we would start moving things to container. Uh, the thing is that I don't, I don't exactly know at what rate but that's containers on its own is not a goal per se. It's basically a side effect of what is coming. And scheduled with a container scheduler. Yes, I mean, that's the beauty of it, right? Any more questions? Yep. Uh, Pablo, uh, you said that um, one push can take us down, but you're talking about 
parallel git pushes, right? You're not talking about a single instant pushing. I, the, the problem is that we have an observability problem there. We don't really know exactly. What we do know is that there was a huge spike in, in writes in the NFS server. And it basically clogged the, clogged the NFS server. And then we went down because across the fleet, everything was waiting on IO. The problem is that we don't exactly know because we don't have um, good enough metrics there to understand where that came from. So we need to first understand exactly where is it coming from. Uh, there's a discussion with Gitaly, uh, with the Gitaly team, to um, have some form. So same thing that uh, Bitpacket did, where they were um, measure rate limiting, so to speak, the the Git access. We will probably need to do something similar to avoid some people to basically push a lot of data at once. The problem when you do a git SSH push is that you're going to start as a, a process and you're going to shovel a lot of data at once. Depending on your connection speed, it may basically use all the available IOPS. That's how it looks like. The problem is that we don't, we don't, have, we don't know for sure that that's the case. OK. We are using Prometheus to log that. The, um, the issue, Joshua, with this is that Prometheus gives us the rate and the bandwidth used. We already have that. But we cannot identify which REPL with Prometheus, we, with the way it is. So it looks like we need something else there. Uh, I, I think it opened an issue for that yesterday. We could basically uh, go back to that one. Any more questions? Yes, Brian, GitLab shell and Gitaly. It's basically, I think that we're gonna, in a short term, we're gonna be replacing the, um, the Git part of GitLab shell for a Gitaly client. So maybe that's the place to do it. Okay, have a great day. Oh, hold on, Jim. Yes, we're using uh, GitLab to manage uh, to manage Chef. We use the dev environment for that. Just in case uh, GitLab.com goes down, we can still recover it with the dev one. All kits, basically. Okay, have a great day, everyone. Bye.